Welcome everyone to the Fenafor Cloud in the field, live from Ignite. Uh, we have two great special guests today, uh, but before, let me talk with my friend Thomas, uh, marketing manager for the Fenafor Cloud. Thomas, thank you very much for being thank on. Thank you for inviting. Yeah, finally. I've been uh, working with Thomas for so many times, but just now at Ignite we met in person, so yeah. it's a great... Meeting the most important influencer <laughs> in our community. Thomas, um, we here release amazing things at Ignite uh, this year. And I really want you to give this uh, overview about what are the main things that you believe are important to our customer to watch out when it comes to our overall Synapse strategy. Yeah, it's a great question. The biggest thing on my mind is CNAP, Cloud Native Application Protection Platforms. The value is really how it's been bridging the previously siloed capabilities into one platform. So we enable customers to understand their DevOps, posture, and workload protection scenario in one go. Yeah. And the thing is, those guests, they are going to some real world examples, uh, which will bring together many of the hypotheses and everything that we always talk about they are actually doing already in their organization or in their customers. So I'm very excited about this conversation. Yeah, it's cool to see all the validation that we have been getting yeah. from the story that we tell and the story they have been telling from their customer experience. Exactly, so I'll keep you uh, here and we go now to our first guest. Sounds good. We have a very special guest from the community, MVP. Uh, thank you very much, Alan Armstrong, for being here today. Thank you. Um, yeah, so my name is Alan Armstrong, and I'm a senior cloud security architect at ITC Secure, um, and I'm an MVP in security. Awesome. Alan, uh, what really at Ignite, we announced a lot of things around the Fender for Cloud. Uh, I don't want to talk immediately about that. I want you to first understand what is your experience with the Fender for Cloud, and uh, you implement this on your environment and customer environments. What is your relationship with the product? Yeah, so um, as part of my sort of role as, a, as an architect, um, I have to, you know, we work with customers to, um, to, to discover their environment and to, because um, some of our customers um, don't, don't know what, you know, what their, you know, their environment looks like, you know, in Azure, AWS, GCP. So we start off with, um, Cloud Security Posture Management, you know, Defender CSPM, um, to get that initial view of the, the landscape. Um, because we don't know what we don't know. Right. Um, and as we're doing that, um, you know, one of the key things is that you know, the, the, defend, the free Defender CSPM um, gets organizations you know, straight away seeing that landscape. And then they can upgrade to the Defender CSPM to get that extra stuff around compliance and things like that. So. Um, as part of our sort of um, engagements with customers and what we're seeing is getting that landscape, understanding what it is, getting their posture score, and then working towards their remediation and you know, getting that score up and making sure that their attack surface is reduced as much as possible. Now, while the free tier is something that it helps a lot of customers mm -hmm. to in the get-go, and you mentioned the security score and everything, uh, we heard a lot from customers about recommendation fatigue, right? that the fact that so many things to address. And that's why with Defender CSPM, we, we have more risk factor approach uh, to give you what you need. The attack path also helps you to prioritize what is important. Are you using those capabilities to prioritize what is important for the environment? Yeah, definitely. You need to work on the, yeah, we use those, those prioritizations um, because you need to make sure you're doing the, the, much, you know, the most, uh, reducing the, the amount of risk as possible um, like you said, prioritizing um, the high risk things um, with the, the least amount of effort in effect so that you can get your, one, your posture score, but your attack surface reduced where your risks are first and then work on those other bits in the background which may be um, less, not necessarily less um, sort of security sink side of things, but maybe your risk factor is lower on, on those bits, on those resources. One of the things that we've been uh, pushing really hard is the concept of CNAP because we understand that for a long time customers, they were really working silos. They were a 
cloud security posture management, workload protection, uh, DevOps, everything was in silos uh, with using even different vendors. With our Synapse strategy, we bring together everything in a way that we are able to share insights. For example, you probably saw that in the attack path, we integrate with Defender ESM to identify external attack surface on the, the IP address and everything. How are you using this uh, aggregation of capabilities uh, and what is the value that you see uh, Defender for Cloud providing when it comes to the, the whole Synapse strategy? Yeah, so like we said, we always start with the, the posture management side of things, but as you're right, when you, when you enable those, those protective workloads, you then add additional posture management side of things along, with, you know, along to enhance your visibility, because you're now moving into not just um, you know, the, the, the management layer of, of the environment, but you're now diving into the, the, the resources. So you, you know, if you're thinking about Defender for Server, you've got the agentless scanning now, so that you can now dive into the virtual machines rather than just seeing the, the configuration at the, you know, at the, the, the Azure level, the AWS and GCP level. Um, and then, as you said, you know, the other side of it around you know, you know, code, um, DevOps, um, you know, now you're seeing that the actual code moving into those applications that you may be managing or infrastructure as code, you can now detect those issues before you deploy it and cause that risk. Yeah. The other thing that uh, we released at GA at Ignite was the Finna for APIs. Are you already using that uh, uh, plan? So, uh, I've been using it whilst it's been in the, the preview, public preview. So yeah, yep. yeah, and I think that's you know that's a very key point because a lot of organisations use their you know, use are using API Manager to um, surface their their applications, you know, their front ends that then talk back to it, and then being able to identify your data, you know, the data classifications or the data types that are going through it as well, it's really key to then understand where you you know how your data is moving around. Since you touch about uh, data. The other thing that uh, we have uh, released at Ignite was the Data Secure Porsche dashboard, which brings everything together, right, in one single dashboard. Because we, we heard from many customers that the Finifor Cloud has a lot of places where they can find things, but they really want that you have one single place when it comes to data posture. Have you already started using this dashboard, and, and why, if you did, why you think is something that is, is very differential? Uh, so I haven't yet had a chance to start using that yet, but um, but started to you know enable the in the part of the Defender CSPM starting to enable that and starting to get it to collect data. So I've not had a chance to you know start using it yet and, and experience it. And that's why it's pretty new. Yeah. So uh, I, I will not hold you account for that. But you agree with the concept, right? Yes. One place to see data sensitivity, you see also alerts uh, related to data in one single place. So. I understand that's very new, you probably didn't have a chance to play around, but that's your homework. Yeah, yeah absolutely, and, and yes, you're right. Seeing all that information in one place is great. Um, and it's great that that, that, you know, that solution is also talking to the purview you know, side of things as well, so you're bringing all of it into, into, you know, into the ecosystem, Microsoft ecosystem. Right. You mentioned that uh, workload protection, and I want you to touch a little bit on that, because one of the biggest advantage in the Venus for Cloud, and we, we've been historically doing that, is to have threat detection that it was very tailored to a specific workload. That's why, for example, we Key Vault, we have Defender for Key Vault, DNS, we have Defender for DNS, you know, and, and so on, because the threat landscape for each workload is different. How do you operationalize the alerts uh, with your incident response team? Do they uh, consume that via the Fender for Cloud or they use Sentinel, how, how that works? So within our, so with, within ITC we've got a managed service, XDR, so um, Microsoft Defender Cloud is one of those workloads that we put into Microsoft Sentinel, um, and then we, you know, the, the detect response and remediation side of things is done within you know, the managed service, if, you know, if our customers are on that. Um, with other customers um, that you know aren't in our in our managed service, um, we're using Microsoft Defender Cloud initially, um, and then if they have got Microsoft Sentinel as their their seam of choice, um, we then you know create those connections, get them to start using it as as you know as their sort of key point. Makes sense. So it usually is a different team. They have a, a, like a SOC that will do that. It's a different team than, than the posture management, correct? Yes, correct, yes. The, the, the instance and, or, yeah, the instance and alerts will go to, you know, to, a, to a SOC or a instant response team, 
and then the project management would be the um, kind of the, the security admins, but also um, that you know, those teams working with the workload owners. Exactly. Because, because you don't know that turning off something would then break your application. Right. Um, the, the thing, since you touch on workload owner, I'm curious to understand how you leverage our governance feature to delegate to the workload owners or to bring visibility to the workload owners that they need to remediate something, right? Because as you said, you don't know who owns that and sometimes you do, but you don't have the privilege to remediate. Yes. So the governance fe feature fits right there. Yeah, so in fact, this was very key for one of our customers. Um, so um, they had a really large, large state, 106, so we talk about sort of Azure mainly, but 106 subscriptions. Um, they didn't know what was where, um, we used CSPM to identify it, um, and then we worked through the process of um, finding out who the owners are, because they didn't tag any of the resources correctly. Yeah. So they weren't using you know, the cloud doctrine framework to, you know, to recommend, you know, do you know, best practice on the environment. So as part of that process of us working with them, um, we got them to create a tag with an email address of the owner, and then using the governance side of things, we made it automatic to use that owner tag to assign that, um, that you know that uh, recommendations to that owner, so then they get badgered, get you get um, get those emails say you need to do this remediation. Yeah, no, this is exactly the purpose, <laughs> and I'm glad that you uh, are using exactly how because we interview a lot of customers to understand the needs, right? And uh, this is exactly the point: is to bring awareness, to notify, and this is part of the fantasy SPM. Yeah, yeah, and it's whilst you can do it, you know even if you could do it sort of manually and assign those tasks to two individuals as well, which you can do, being able to do that automatically just reduces that you know, mean time for as soon as that remediation turns up, it's straight to that owner. And yes, that owner, that owner might be the, um, the team lead for that team. So maybe it's like the SQL team, as an example. Um, it might be the team lead, so they get the initial bit, mm -hmm. and then, it might, then they can reallocate it to their team members yeah. um, to then do that work, because it might be that they're looking after that SQL server. Now, throughout the years, uh, the posture management team has really expanded, mainly the charter and the things that they have to do. For customers that they are a little bit more mature, they are start to leverage features such as Cloud Security Explorer to really do proactive hunting of uh, potential scenarios of compromise, right? Are you already at that point uh, of uh, maturity that you are using Cloud Security Explorer to better understand Potential, potential scenarios of compromise on your environment? So I've been using it and sort of understanding it's really easy to use to get that, you know, to be able to identify your type of resource, things like that. I'm not using it in anger at the moment because um, mainly with our customers at the moment, because um, internally, yes, we're using it for our, you know, to secure our managed service and things like that. Um, but with our customers, um, we're at probably starting to get to that stage now where they, they understand their environment, they're starting to protect their workloads and then you know, the next bit will be starting to use that, that Security Explorer to then just kind of dive in a bit, a bit deeper. Yeah, but you, 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 you said it right. It's very easy to use because it's a UI, you don't have to type any custom query language. No. It's, it's really good. Yeah. Uh, and it's, you actually can create a very complex query because you keep can adding conditions, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's, um, yeah, when it was in the, because I think I, I started using it when it was in the in the private preview, because I'm part of the the now cloud security, I don't know, security customer program. Um, it was great, you know, seeing initially being really easy to do it. Because I think beforehand you could use the resource explorer. I think it was very similar, and you could try and yeah, the R, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but you have to manually do oh, it. Yeah, that was, it was. It's complex. Yes. Um, but yeah, this is a lot simpler to use, definitely. No, nice, very, very cool. Uh, the other thing that is still on the posture I mean, is such a big uh, set of things. You, talk, you were talking about mean time to resolve and things like that. One of the things that we notice with the attack path is we understand customers use sometimes the secure score as their KPI to, yeah. to look for progress and everything, but some customers, they're starting to use the attack path as this measurement of progress. The reason why, for example, I say, let's say I have 15 attack paths. <coughs> if one month from now I have 20 attack paths, that's a really bad signal. I, I'm yeah. continue, I'm not only not remediating those attack paths, I'm actually growing the amount of uh, scenarios. 
So are you already starting to measure progress through reducing the amount of attack paths? Yeah, so we're probably using the, um, the posture score for kind of uh, reporting to the boards and things like that, see, and that as well as the um, compliance, using the, the compliance parts of it, whether you need to be ISO 27001 and NIST and things like that. Um, but yes, from a, um, from a security team and things like that, um, yes, looking at the, the attack paths and then understanding um, whether that's increasing and, and trying to reduce that, you know, reduce the lateral movement within your environment. And at uh, Ignite, we released the cross-cloud attack path. So now, if uh, a threat actor starts the attack on Azure, and uh, for some reason uh, the attacker is able to move laterally to AWS or GCP, we are able to catch that and show in the attack path, which is fantastic, because now you have the, the full picture end-to-end -end about a potential cross-cloud attack. That, that's brilliant because you know bringing in that multi-cloud from AWS GCP and Azure for just CSPM was you know amazing to be able to see it all in one portal. And like you said, now now you can see that that attack path across you know, multiple you know, the multiple clouds. So that's great. Yeah, that's great. Uh, before we wrap up, what would be if you have to advise someone that is starting this journey to use Defender for Cloud? What would be like your three top priorities? Uh, as soon as you onboard in, in the Finnafor Cloud, uh, so so really it would be um, probably the onboarding, um, making sure that all your environments and all your you know, are connected, so you can see you know, your whole environment, and then it will then be to kind of look at your recommendations, look at that score, um, and then start working on your workloads using the because again some of those workloads can be potentially disruptive to some res you know, some of your your resources, but start potentially start working on some of the easier ones and then look at that priority and work out you know, which ones are going to reduce your attack surface in, your, in the clouds. Excellent. Alan, thank you very much uh, for your time today. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming uh, to Ignite and for spending some time with us. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. All right, so we are continue here at Ignite 2023, uh, Defender for Cloud in the Field, live from the Expo Hall. Now we have Morton. Yes. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Do it. Enjoy. All the way from Denmark uh, to Ignite. Morten, I would like to ask you uh, some questions because I know that you've been working with Defender for Cloud for a long time. You are a very active uh, member of the community. Uh, what are some of the innovations that we brought to Ignite this year in Defender for Cloud that really inspire you to go back and start using it? Well. You know, of course, here at Ignite right now, the, the big thing is, of course, the AI stuff. Yeah, and I'm really focusing on learning more about the security stuff in, in particular. And uh, when it comes to the security co-pilot, so that's, you know, when it talks about the Ignite. So that's, of course, what I want to learn about. And also to hear some of the concerns that people are bringing in regards to security, to understand how we can you know, you know, help uh, doing the, the, you know, the product a little bit better uh, in case that there are some issues that are areas that we need to deal with. Makes sense. Yeah. And at Ignite, we announced the integration of Copilot yes. with the Finifor Cloud. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, what are your, your some of your thoughts about this integration, and uh, have you seen some of these scenarios? Um, I. I'm really uh, looking forward to, to you know play with it you know eventually. So that's uh, of course something that uh, I'm really eager to try. Uh, so, but I think uh, it is uh, going to be very interesting to to learn how to to work with all the the data, how to protect your data, uh, and uh, how we need to you know change our customers' environment uh, and make sure to to lock down everything and. Uh, so it's protected, so yeah. I think that's very important. One of the things that we, we talk about prior to start recording mm. was about threat detection, because yes. you are pretty heavy on that area, and it yes. looks like uh, the workload protection plan yeah. is really something that you've been working yes. uh, for yes. a long time, yes. right? Yes. Uh, can you give some examples of scenarios that you've been using yes. our workload protection? Yeah, so yeah, my customers are, you know, still, you know, a lot of them are still doing servers on-prem, 
but what they are adopting is past services in the Azure uh, environment. So in order for us to protect these past services, we are enabling Defender for Cloud. And that goes with, for example, you know, key walls, uh, APIs, and uh, you know, some of these services, storage account, and, and, and like that. So we're rolling out Defender for Cloud in you know, all our customers uh, to protect these different workloads because it's very important to them to have these you know, protection. And we're also integrating the, uh, the Sentinel uh, in most cases, so we are you know, streaming up uh, the alerts and, 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 and doing that and, and as a single pane of view for all our you know, workloads and servers in our environment. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. The other scenario that we discussed briefly was about the innovations that we are bringing on Defender CSPM, yes. mainly around the attack path. Exactly. Uh, you've been using attack path for a long time, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, how you are operationalizing the use of the attack path? Yeah, I think you know, uh, working with the security. For me, it's not important just to have the reactive way to to deal with things where you are, you know, the incident happened. So for me, it's also very important to go in and, and do proactive uh, you know, yes. analysis in the environment exactly. and foreseeing uh, you know, what are you know, areas where you need to, to protect your environment. And that's where attack path comes into play as well as secure score as well. Uh, so for me, working with these recommendations is very core to me and, and also in our environment, you know, changes happens. So it could be, you know, a developer that are doing some things uh, wrong or uh, by mistake, uh, or it could be me doing that. And that's where, for example, attack path come into play because I can, you know, analyze, or Microsoft helps me analyze the environment mm -hmm. to detect these different things. Yeah. I think that's very valuable. That's very powerful, that's very powerful. And as you said, doing that proactively yes. before threat actors exactly. actually do something. Yes, exactly. that's, that's super important. Yes, exactly. And I've had an example of an incident recently where um, a developer was uh, having an ARM template that was, you know, he, he, he was just basically deploying it. But what, ha what he didn't know was that it actually set up, for example, a public IP on the VM and stuff like that. And, and, and that's where Defender for Cloud uh, came into play and uh, detected that uh, deployment. And it, it protected the environment very fast. Yeah. So, uh, I've seen some, some scenarios like that where a customer was like, no, we don't have yeah. a machines exposed to the internet. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as we open attack path, boom, it's right there. Yes. Uh, exactly. and, and that's very surprising for yes. many customers. Yes, very much. Yeah. yeah. Now you were talking about developers, yeah. and uh, at Ignite we also announced that uh, DevOps security is now part of Defender CSPM, yes. uh, which brings a lot of value for Defender CSPM, yes. right? Yeah. Uh, are you already using our DevOps security capabilities? Uh, not me personally, but I have customers where they are using DevOps, and they're uh, integrating it into their environment to protect and. Uh, you know, making sure that the uh, like the images and the vulnerabilities are you know detected if there are any issues, and and so they're going through that uh, in their lifecycle process. Yeah, it's all about bringing uh, bridging the gap between the dev and the yeah. security administrator, exactly. because they were working silos before, yeah. and now exactly. we are bringing all those things together in, into a single place. Yes. Yeah. The other thing is defender API for APIs yeah. uh, that which we announced in GA. Yeah. What's yeah. your experience so far with APIs? Yeah. I have a customer that was uh, really really happy to learn that they now actually can protect their APIs, uh, and uh, so it, it's uh, it's really really cool. And I was uh, seeing a demo yesterday in the uh, pre lab session. Uh, where they were showing it, and uh, I, I could see from the audience that the people were very, very happy. That's so awesome. I think this is uh, really cool that you're you're protecting, like you know, all, all these core services. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very good. Yeah, absolutely. No, M Morton, uh, thank you very much for thank taking you. the time to uh, talk to us. Uh, good luck on the rest of the conference. I know that you are traveling tomorrow, so I appreciate. I hope to see you in my breakout session. Yeah, uh, 
and uh, continue to bring feedback because, as I said, you are very active in the community. Your voice is very important to, to us uh, to continue to improve the product. So keep bringing those feedback. I can All right. You that. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. All right, everyone, that's a wrap uh, for this uh, live at Ignite episode. Um, we have individual episodes with uh, feature PMs to talk about all the capabilities that we release at Ignite. So stay tuned, subscribe to our channel, click on the AKA link below to access our playlist and subscribe to the Microsoft Security Channel. See you next time.